Hi guys, welcome. I feel like updating this machine once more. This is Arch Linux. So in Arch Linux we provide you the knowledge to start with step one, step two, phases we call it. And in phase five we say let's go for an Arch Linux ISO and install it step by step with a black screen. And that's what happened here. And this is my machine that I keep on updating. And the last time I booted this thing up, was so we started rolling january the 2nd in 2020 okay it's now 21 and we scroll up and we really need to scroll up last time it was april the 13th so i gradually make videos so you see that hey guys you don't have to um, listen to people say you need to update daily because otherwise Arch Linux will break it's not there are videos in here where we update for a year or something like that so it is only knowledge that's the only thing you need now in this case it's gonna be a jump off let's say a month and a half right almost two months so anyway where do we go we do for an update but let's make the mistake this is Arch Linux. update was an alias an alias saying go pacman go update me everything and as you will see you will get Maybe you should do that first. Control C. Tell me what is the version of Pac-Man. You know the drill, the change of Pac-Man, jumping from five to six. So this will happen here as well. No Eric, not gonna work. So no Pac-Man minus S Y Y U. So article Linux is like no, let's first concentrate. K okay, patience, uh-huh. Fine, a name change, fine, whatever, name change, whatever, yes. Okay, cool, and off it goes. So now we can talk. Article Linux is nothing more than Arch Linux. 95% is Arch Linux. Then it's two and a half, three percent is coming from AOR, so pocket packages like Spotify and all that. And two or three percent is coming from Arch Linux. Our configurations, how do we want to look at uh, what wallpaper do we want to have, things like that. Many packages we have created for 22 desktops, right? So, um, so basically, um, as beta tester, if you have the ambitions in the future, then you need to have two machines. You need to have an Arch Linux machine to compare with an Arch Linux machine. So you can always go back to the mother. Uh, settings or whatever you want to call it to the Arch Linux settings and compare what's going on on both machines. Since 95% is going to be the same, um, we always can have a look. How is it behaving? How is this application doing? What happens if I do this and that on Arch Linux? What happens if I do this and that on Arch Linux? So that's the beta tester role and knowing and also becoming a Sherlock Holmes and investigating, trying this, trying that, breaking things, and that's the point, <laughs> right? That's the only way we can beta test things. So we're just waiting for updates to come in. We're almost at, can we see that somewhere? Not really, but there's a lot of stuff coming in. It's about two months, uh, probably in the gigabytes already. I think we can see it up here still now. Yep, ooh la la, 2.2 gigabytes. So if you're used to other Linux distributions, this is quite normal. So if you have a very low budget internet with no volume, maybe you should consider another uh, distribution, not Arch Linux, because it's normal that we update um, quite a bit and we as developers of course we update daily but if you update of course once a month you'll probably have less monthly volume than you do it daily so that's another idea okay let's type okay space i wanted to tell you if you type space you're at the end of your um, update list here and it's still quite a bit of things to update we're jumping probably from Linux kernel. Let's see, let's have a look. We are at 11.13 at this point. When I boot it up, that's something else. That's very typical of Arch Linux. We tend to have 
four, five, six, seven, more like five, six, seven uh, kernels a month. So one or two kernels a week is, is not rare. And that kernel, of course, is, is where everything happens. If you have issues, it's definitely a good idea to have a look. What other kernels do I have? Minus S Linux. And these are the choices, right? There's a Linux kernel. That's the standard that we have. That's Arch Linux uses. There's a hardened one. There is the LTS, the long-term support. That's maybe a good one if you have problems with Bluetooth, wireless, webcam, things like that. That you say, let's try the Linux LTS, see if it's fixed. And there's the Zen. So four choices. And yeah, if you're on Arch Linux, we have the chaotic repository enabled and on there. I think you have around 100 Linux kernels so to try out these days. All right, let's go back down. Still downloading. What else shall I tell you? We have played around with our plasma settings rather than having it at the bottom. We've put it at the top. I've played around with fonts and I kind of want to stress the importance of importance of fonts people always take it for granted but it's not right it's it's important it's something we look at all day and it's either readable or, or you don't like it and stuff like that it's it's a choice and if you want to have extra fonts still downloading so i can just keep talking guys there is yay maybe did i install yay yay is, is there um, but you type in TTF or something, yay TTF or yay fonts and you get a long list of fonts or you just Google or DuckDuckGo and say best fonts in Linux, right? And then you see if you like it, if you say agree that those are the best fonts, of course, it's always a choice. So this is critical. Let's watch this. Do we get the key rings in? Yes. Do we have the package integrity as a guarantee? So Pacman is watching over us, the package manager. Any file conflicts? There can be only one package that provides one file and available disk space. I hope that's still okay. And off it goes, right. So we don't have a look. Don't have to look at it anymore. It just will go on. So main uh, mono space, let's do a different, oh, sorry. Let's do a different look. Adjust all fonts is a great feature. Fonts, right? And it will change. Well, let's try what hack looks like. Font, regular. How about bold? I really wanted to see. Yeah, let's see. So you change every hack 11 PT thing in here. You apply, of course. And then you close everything down again. And then you go and oh look at that so it's readable right it's if i have an issue with uh, reading my fonts oh it's not responding now this can happen right we are updating stuff it's normal in plasma that after like two months updates you need to reboot you knew i was going to say that right this this definitely will be and there it is restart is required the system needs to be again thank you plasma right thank, thank you plasma for letting us know that but so here it is if you have some issues with eyesight there you go you have lots of possibilities i've been playing around here the arclinks materia is working so we loved materia we changed it to what we like to have it it's still from Alexei Farvorovolomiv, right? You can read it better than me, but it's um, changed. It's a little bit tweaked the way we see it, the way we like it. That's why it says Arclinux here. And maybe some people are wondering, Eric, when you do this button, everything explodes, right? It's great that everything explodes. It's in here. Let's have a look where it is again. The special window manager, is it here? Window behavior, right? No. Task switcher, where is it again? These workspace, here it is, here it is, here it is. Uh, desktop effects. So there's zoom, blur. Blur is an interesting thing. 
the how's it called again morphing I'll just have a look what I have from settings the wobbly things I love the wobbly things where's the explode thing it's somewhere in here I have, must have missed it but somewhere in here we can say if you close a window then you explode fall apart I guess closed windows fall into pieces so there's some fun stuff and it's um, it's stable that's important because I was just thinking about the other tool we used to have years ago that I tried now we had these flames these windows went up into flames and I don't recall the name but somebody can tell me underneath this YouTube video oh, what was it called again but it was basically not that stable you could really crash the system if you were meddling with code or settings just settings um, no no recollection anymore so that's great now it's up to date now so now we have a system that works what you always do as you see I'm working in a terminal I could have done the same thing in discover I recommend you guys I just made a video about gnome software about um, PAMAC about Pacman itself about bow about um, forgetting one I'm feeling octopi right all graphical user interfaces to install applications but please in the beginning I understand black screen terminal all that but try to um, well move away from GUIs and go to a terminal because it gives you information upgrading this upgrading that there's a pipe wire here things like that there is communication between the developer the one who created the package and us me right so you need to have a look at some of the code and when there's anything red you go and look because I say oh what's going on something happened here I need to intervene or there's a message or a warning so um, it pays off to watch what happens to your machine basically all right I'm out have fun updating your systems have fun learning an article next because that's basically what we are an educational project you being able to have a free personal operating system that you can maintain that you can update and eventually you can really make your own ISO your own choices because that's all what Linux distros are everybody else makes a different choice and in the end you get a different distro that's it all right enjoy